Welcome to this video, great to have you here. You probably watched my last video about routing and I strongly recommend doing so because this video builds up upon it. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can use our router, our routes we already set up and navigate to them using links and how we can also pass data, how we can pass parameters to our routes. So let's get started. This is the application as we have it right now. We get the slash users route and the, well, main route, just slash at the end, where we have the home component getting loaded. Now, it's nice that we can navigate around by entering the right path here in the URL, but I think the user experience would be a little bit better if we would not only do it like that, but also have some links we can click, some, some header you could say. Well, let's implement such a thing. The place to implement it is of course the app.view file, which acts like a skeleton, which has our router view and which is responsible for loading our routes or rendering them here in this router view place. So here I wanna add a navigation and you could of course style this in a much nicer way. This clearly is pretty ugly, but it shows how it works and that's the key thing here. So I added a horizontal line below the heading and then let's say we wanna have a link and this link shall lead to the home page. Now clearly we could do it like that, just link to slash with text home and we got a home link here. If I click this, it reloads. If I enter users, click this, we go back to the home page. but you probably recognize that it always reloads the page because we're always sending a new request to the server and the server gives us back the index HTML page. That clearly is not what we want to have because it destroys our whole application state every time we navigate around. So that is not really a great user experience. Instead, it would be great if we would never leave this running application and just re-render the part of the DOM which should be re-rendered. That is what we're building a single page application for in the end, right? Well, we can do this. We get router view to render or to mark the place where the component shall get rendered. We got another important component we can use, router link. Now router link allows us to create a link which will basically be handled in a way where there is no request sent to the server. Instead, the click is handled by the view router and the component which shall be loaded is loaded. So here, let's name it home. And in order to make this work, we need to set this to and then equal slash, for example. Side note, you can also bind to with we bind colon or shortcut just colon and then also bind to some variable holding the path here. Now, since I do enter the full path here anyways, I don't need that, so I will just route to slash, but you can make this more dynamic by binding to a property. So that's the home link. Let me also add a users link where I navigate to slash users. And with that, if I save this, now you can see it also loads the appropriate component, but you can clearly see by watching this reload icon here, it never reloads the page. It never sends a fresh request because it shouldn't and it doesn't. So this is a much better way of navigating around. That is one important thing, but now let's also pass some data. That would be great, wouldn't it? And also, how can we navigate without using links? Because we might have some places in code where we want to trigger a navigation action when some code is finished or when we executed some code and not when the user clicks somewhere. Well, let's have a look at both, starting with the parameters. We can send parameters by simply adding them to our URL. So let's say here in users, we expect to get some parameters, some user ID, even though it's called users, but still. So here we expect some ID or let's call it team ID. So we wanna see all users of one team. And team ID like this, of course, won't work. Let's give it a real ID, like let's say 10. So we wanna load the team with the ID 10 here, just an arbitrary example. Now in the user's template here, we wanna output this. So let's add a wrapping div because we may only have one root element here in the template. And there we shall have a paragraph where we say team ID is, and then we wanna output team ID, something like that. It won't work right now. 
In the main.js file where we configure the routes, we now have to tell the view router that a part of the URL of the path will be dynamic, will be a variable. We do this by adding slash colon. This colon is important. It indicates that the following word or part is dynamic. And then any name you like, for example, team ID, like this. This name here is up to you. You will be able to extract the data by calling this property later on. So this tells the view router that there is a dynamic path. In the app.view file, we're passing 10 in this position. So we want to extract that 10 later on. The missing piece is now in the users.view file. Here, we want to extract this. Now we can do this by adding a script and here export our default object, this view.js object. And now how do we get that routing data here? Well, inside of our view instance, we got access to this route parents. Now that clearly won't work here because, uh, well, that's is just in the object, right? I needed to call this in some method. But since we have this dollar sign route property here available, and this is available because we added the view router here as a plugin, this gives us access to dollar sign route. We can also access this in our template. So here I can just access dollar sign route. Again, dollar sign route is made available by the view router params and on the params we know we called it team id so this team id here of course has to match the name we gave it here now if i save this and we go to our home page here and i click on users again it loads user slash 10 and you see team id is 10 here so this clearly works and if i manually enter 12 here you see now it outputs 12 but now I want to show you a little gotcha you can run into. Let's add another link where we load the team with the ID 12. So users for team 12 and here we got users for team 10. Should be straightforward, right? If I click users 12 or let's go to home first. If I click users uh, team 12, we see 12. If I now click 10, we see 10. But now let's go back to the application and enter a lifecycle hook here. Lifecycle hooks are basically methods which are executed automatically on a view instance when it is created and so on. You can learn more about them in the official docs. You can find a link to lifecycle hooks in the video description. One hook is the created method. And this clearly shall not be here. Excuse me, we shall be in the users.view file. So created. This method will be executed by Vue.js whenever this component here is created. And here I want to simply say alert and want to output this route params, params team ID like this. So let me save this and it opened it on another window, but it opened it. Now, if I click home and click 10, we see it again. If I click 12, we don't see it. We see the URL change. We see it change in the template, but we don't get the alert. I have to go to home and back before we see that alert again. Now, why is that? Because Vue.js manages the components very efficiently when using routing. It doesn't destroy them just because we're switching between 10 and 12 here. It keeps the component because it's the same component. Why would it destroy and recreate it? That only costs performance, right? So therefore, it's a clever behavior that it doesn't destroy the component. Instead, it keeps it alive and only re-renders the parts of the DOM which need to be re-rendered. That is generally a good thing, but it is bad if we have some methods depending on that. Like here, where we execute some code in the created method. This is not executed every time we switch the route. Now, to make this work, we have to set up a watcher. So we add the watch property here and in the object we set up that we want to watch dollar sign route we need to enclose this in single quotation marks because dollar sign is a special character which is generally not allowed in property names so now we can watch this route property and here we write this in es6 method style we get the to and from parameter passed by Vue.js. This basically just means to which route are we navigating and from which route are we coming. 
Well, in here we can then simply alert and say to params team ID. Now, if we do this and save this, it give me the gave me the alert off screen. But if I now click 10, we get the alert. If I click 12, I get the alert because now we're watching this route property, which of course does change. That was always the case. But now we're executing this code here whenever it changes because we're watching it. So the component is not getting recreated, but we're still getting informed. Now I'm going to comment that out for the last piece of things or code I want to show you. Navigating from within your code. So in the users.view file, let's say we have a button and I want to go home when clicking this button. Now clearly we got this home link here, right? But still, let's say we want to do this when we click this button. So here I add add click and then I execute the go home method, a method which I'll add down here. So in the methods object, I have go home like this and I could run X any code there. Now here we're basically just navigating. So a link would technically be the wiser decision, but let's imagine we would have some other code here. So how do we do this here then? Well, we can simply access the router, the view router, and there we can push a new route on that stack, so to say, because you can think of it as a stack because we can use the back button to remove the top level element and go back one page. So we want to push a new page on that stack and we decide which page by entering a path here. So let's say just slash, which you want to go to just home. So we basically enter the same here as an argument to push as we enter here as an argument to our links here to the to attribute. Now by doing this, if I save this and I click go home, I'm back to the home page, but now I navigated from inside my code. So with that, you learned a lot about the view router. And if you want to learn more, you can find a link to the official docs in the video description. The view router is very powerful, but with this video and the last video before that, you should have a solid understanding of how routing works, how you can set up routes and how you can navigate around. Now there is more to it and these docs should get you started to really dive deeper into that.